Welcome to the installation video for Shaw Industries' new EcoWorks Broadloom, the new sustainable recyclable Broadloom backing system. Maintain the temperature of the installation site, carpet, adhesive, and seam sealer between 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours before the installation. Do not begin the installation if the room or subfloor temperature is below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The adhesive and seam sealer will not function properly when applied over an extremely cold surface. Relative humidity should not exceed 65%. These conditions must be maintained for 24 hours prior to, during, and 24 hours after installation. Test the slab for moisture and alkalinity prior to beginning the installation. Check the concrete for surface pH at several locations. A reading below 5.0 or above 9.0 requires corrective measures. Specific information on the correct method of neutralizing extremely low or high pH is available from the Shaw Field Technical Services Department. Check the concrete for moisture at several locations using anhydrous calcium chloride test kits. The moisture transmission rate must not exceed 5.0 pounds per thousand square feet per 24 hours. Do not begin the installation if a higher moisture transmission rate is detected. Do not use other methods of moisture testing as they are not reliable. If moisture is excessive, advise the general contractor or building owner for a decision on whether to begin. Shaw is not responsible for any moisture related installation failures if these guidelines are not strictly followed. The floor must be free of dust, dirt, oil, grease, paint and wax, moisture of any debris that could affect adhesion of these backings to the floor. Do not use sweeping compounds as they may leave an oily residue that can prevent adhesive from bonding to the subfloor. The floor must be level and smooth. Depressions and cracks must be filled with a liquid latex additive patching compound and all protrusions leveled. Any previous adhesives need to be removed to a bonded residue. Note, do not sand or scrape vinyl asbestos tile, or VAT, without proper attention to asbestos abatement procedures and precautions in according with all state and local codes. Shaw accepts no responsibility if loose asbestos containing floorings are affected upon removal of carpeting. Concrete floors must be sealed if dusting or powdering exists. The following floor sealers are suggested for concrete. Shaw Contract 9050 Floor Sealer and Shaw 8550 Level Primer. Shaw recommends the use of Shaw 3500 or 3600 adhesives or equivalent adhesives, which have been formulated with a higher solids content and will perform adequately with the Eco Broadloom backings. Use of other adhesive could result in an installation failure. Any claims resulting from installation failures due to adhesive should be directed to the applicable adhesive manufacturer. For information regarding equivalent adhesives, please contact Shaw at 1-877-502-7429. Pattern Products Recommended Application 1 8 by 1 8 by 1 8 inch U-notch trowel providing a coverage rate of 5 to 7 yards per gallon. Container size of 4 gallons depending on the porosity of the substrate. Non-pattern products 3 32nd by 3 32nd by 3 32nd of an inch U-notch trowel or equivalent that will provide a coverage rate of 8 to 9 yards per gallon with a container size of four gallons, depending on the porosity of the substrate. On extremely porous or floors with residual multi-purpose adhesive, more glue will be needed. Coverage rates should be closely monitored. 
Excessive rates may indicate a worn or improperly notched trowel. Due to the high solids content of these adhesives, a reduced setup time can be expected. Adhesive open time will vary depending on the temperatures and humidity at the job site. The adhesive is ready for carpet installation when the entire ridge of glue becomes tacky. This can be checked by firmly placing a finger into the ridge of adhesive and pressing to the floor. Lift slowly and the adhesive should stick to the floor and your finger and have leg or strings for one to two inches. Fans or air movers blowing across, not on the adhesive, will greatly reduce the required open time. Inadequate adhesive application or setup time may result in bubbles and or peaked seams and repair will require more time and effort than proper initial installation. Dry lay the entire area to be carpeted. Implement roll sequencing prior to cutting any textured graphic product. Dry laying will minimize the normal variations encountered when pattern matching and reveal any bow or skew within the roll. Follow the roll numbers sequentially. If the roll information has been removed prior to the carpet arriving on the job site, the date and time is backstamped in military time on the carpet to assist in sequencing. This backing should be rolled widthwise and then lengthwise with a 75 to 100 pound roller to assure transfer of the adhesive between floor and carpet backing and to eliminate any trapped air. Failure to perform this could result in bubbling or unwanted air pockets. Seam edges shall be trimmed using tools and techniques best suited for the carpet. Trim edges far enough into the material, normally about eight to 10 rows, to maintain the structural integrity of the carpet. The cutting technique for this backing system is row cut both edges. Correct pattern matching, gaps and overlaid areas with use of a knee kicker, power stretcher, dead man, mini stretcher and stay nails. Pattern carpets must be cut by the row cut, row cut method and dry laid to ensure pattern match. Also check for side match and any visual defects. Use a screwdriver to separate the rows of yarn and cut with a cushion back or loop pile cutter. After the adhesive has become tacky, place the first drop into the adhesive and apply the seam sealer following with a second breadth pattern matching if necessary. Use of a power stretcher, dead man, mini stretcher and stay nails may be required to obtain the proper match. Remove stay nails after the adhesive setup, approximately 12 to 24 hours after installation. Cross seams can be made the same as side seams if the rows can be run across the width. If not, Cut both sides of the carpeting on pattern and proceed to pattern match the seam. All commercial Broadloom products require the use of a latex seam sealer, such as Shaw 4000, or a polymer sealer, such as Shaw 8300, providing a moisture impervious seam. Seam sealer must be applied to the edges trimmed for seaming and cover the thickness of both the primary and secondary backing without contaminating the face yarn. Caution: Seam edges must be sealed to prevent edge ravel, tuft loss, and delamination of the secondary backing in the seamed area. In order to alleviate bubbles, creases, pile distortion and crushing, it is advised to steam the carpet. Successful steaming is dependent on an adequate application of adhesive. Shaw recommends the use of a wallpaper steamer that has a 12 inch plastic head. Wallpaper steamers can be obtained through any local hardware store and can be also rented for a minimal charge. A white cotton cloth should be placed under the head of the steamer 
to protect the carpet fiber. Placing the steamer on the affected area for approximately 45 seconds to one minute will allow the carpet backing to become pliable and reactivate the adhesive in order to assist in removal of the bubbles, creases, or pile distortion. When the carpet is properly steamed, the affected area should be rolled with a carpet tractor to create a bond between the carpet backing and adhesive. It may be necessary to repeat this process in order to alleviate an area displaying bubbles. If steaming does not correct the bubbled areas, then an application of adhesive to the affected area may be necessary. Allowing adequate adhesive tack time will ensure proper adhesion. Note, if the steamer is left for a prolonged period of time on the carpeting, it could potentially cause the carpet fiber to appear darker. As the carpeting dries and the moisture dissipates, the carpet will regain its original color. Where carpet meets other floor coverings, the edges must be adequately protected with an appropriate transition molding or strip that covers the carpet edge at least a half inch. Post-installation care and protection. Number one, use plywood over the carpet when heavy objects are moved within 24 hours after installation. Number two, protective chair mats under chairs with casters are recommended. This will prevent excessive wear to the face of the carpeting. Number three, a non-staining building material paper must be placed over the carpet to protect it when additional construction activity is to take place that could soil or stain it. Do not use plastic sheeting as it can trap moisture. The self-sticking type can transfer adhesive residue to the carpet that will attract soil. These installation procedures are intended to assist in the installation and care of shawl carpet under most job conditions. Specific questions regarding installation and maintenance not covered must be referred to the Shaw Technical Services Department at 1-800-471-7429. Any variance from these procedures will become the responsibility of the installer and not Shaw Incorporated.